Okay, so we've looked at uh, the major scale. And now a scale is literally one note played after the other. Now what we can do is take certain notes of those, of that scale, and we can put them together to make what we call chords. Now chords are three notes that are played at the same time. Which three notes can we use from the major scale that are going to sound good? Well, there is a kind of a formula where we play one, we miss one, and we play one. And if we do that, we end up with playing number one, missing number two, going straight to number three, missing number four, and going straight to number five. So we end up with number one, number three, and number five. Now, if we play them like that, I can't play them all at the same time. I can only get the first note and the fifth note. About number one and five later on. This is known as what they call a power chord. And we'll come on to that one later. So what we need to do is spread these notes across the fretboard. Okay, so we're going to be playing what they call a C major chord. Now the C major chord starts with the first note, which is C, goes on to the third note, which is E, and then the fifth note, which is a G. So if we play those all at the same time. I'm only playing those first three strings there. Okay, now that's a problem if you really want to strum and go for it. Because at the top end of this we end up with notes that aren't quite in the, in the scale that we need. So what we need to do is cover up some of these notes with the notes that we've already used. So either a C, a G or an E. So let's have a look at the next string. Well it's a B note. Well, what comes after B? C comes after B. So we can repeat that note. So now we have C, E, G, another C, and the top string happens to be an E. Okay, so we've got the, all the notes that we need, we're covering all, all the strings, now we can hit all five strings here. And there's a C chord, okay. Now your fingers at this point will probably wanting to go like this, and you'll probably have to use the other hand to move the fingers around, don't worry about that. The more you do this, the fingers will remember and they will gain strength. Now the same rules apply here when we're playing chords as to when we play scales, with the thumb somewhere in the middle of the back of the neck, okay? Now I've known guitar teachers to tape a dot there. Uh, this, this is a little bit too anorak, okay? Somewhere where it's comfortable for you. Everybody is different, okay? But what we want is clear notes all the way through this chord. start to get this, we've got a problem. It's going to be one of two things. Either one finger is covering up a string, or you're not quite pressing down hard enough. You have to figure that yourself. Now look at the hand here. If I pull this hand back, in other words, if I bring this thumb up over the top, I'm going to mute all those strings because I can't arc the fingers well enough to clear the other strings. Okay? So none of this over the top stuff, okay? Too many guys I've seen do this. It's a very bad habit. Very easy to get into bad habits, but it's also very easy to get into good habits, okay? Okay, so that's your first call. That's a C major. They're used commonly within guitar playing. Um, we're going to look at E major, A major, and D major. Okay, so your first E major chord. Um, we're basically again taking the numbers 1, 3, and 5. Now, every time you play a major chord, it's taken from that scale. So if we're playing the notes of uh, playing the chord of E major, those notes come from the E major scale. Okay? Now, I'm just going to play this chord for you. Here's your shape, and you can see my fingering there, so please use the same fingering. I've seen guys that have done this before, and they use all different... This is the best way to play this chord. Okay? So here's E major. All six strings. Okay? Again, the thumb somewhere near the middle of the back of the neck. Okay? As soon as you bring it up there, you get those muty notes again. We don't want that. Pick every note to start with to make sure you're getting every single note. And the other thing as well is how you attack 
when you strike with the plectrum, okay? We can, we can attack it like this, and it's a bit nasty and people will run and probably kill you. Um, stroke it. Okay, think musically here. Okay. Now, we spoke earlier about different types of scales, major scales and minor scales. The same thing can apply to chords. For every major chord, it has a brother called a minor chord. It's slightly darker. Now notice what I did with one finger there. Now once you learn the rule for this one, the next two chords that we look at, the A and the D, will have the same rule. This underneath finger, what I'm doing is I'm taking it down one flat, fret. And when we take a note down, we call, we, we call it flattening the note. Think of a tyre going down, the tyre goes flat, flattening. You can hear that. Let me pick these notes. And it sounds a lot darker. Okay. Some of you that have heard Metallica will know nothing else matters. Okay, so it's that underneath finger when you've got that shape that is going to determine whether it's going to be a major chord or a minor chord. Okay, so there's your E chord. Okay, so we're straight on to the A chord. The A chord can be a bit tricky to, to, to finger this one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to squash all your three fingers together there. First three fingers. That's your index, middle, ring finger, and pinky, or little finger. All fingers one, two, three, and four. So we need fingers one, two, and three. And they're right in the same line, they're all on the same fret. And with this time, we're going to start from the open A string, elephants and the open A. So here's the A major chord. Okay, picking every note, making sure we're getting good, clean notes. Remember, if we get this, something's wrong, adjust. Just rock that hand forward, drop the thumb, and it will open the hand up. If you're not pressing hard enough, you will also get it. So just make sure you've got enough pressure. You don't need too much pressure. You know, we're not squeezing the hell out of the neck here. Just nice and lightly. Just enough to get a good clean note. Okay. Now here's the same rule. To make this a minor chord, this underneath finger has to go down that way. One fret. Okay, so how are we going to do I can't physically move that finger onto that fret. So we're going to have to change fingers here. Okay, so we're going to take two and three, replace them where one and two were, and this last, your first finger, your index finger, can now drop down. So effectively, what we've done is we've taken that note and moved it down one fret. Let me show you the difference between the notes. Okay, here's the major chord. Here's the minor. Very subtle dis difference, but it Underneath finger, one fret down, we'll make it minor. Major, minor. Don't forget, you're going to have to change your fingers around here. Okay? So the same rule from the E major applies to the A major. Let's move on to the D chord. Now the D chord is quite a nice shape to play. Now I think of this as like a, a tricycle. We have two wheels at the back, and we have the front wheel. Okay? That's a lovely little shape to remember. Okay, this time we're starting from the D string, the dog string, elephants and dogs. Okay, and we've only got four strings to play now. Okay, lovely chord. Again, same rule. Make this a minor chord by taking the underneath finger down one foot. Now again, physically I can't do that, so you're going to have to swap fingers around. Now let's move from there down to there. Well, you're probably going to say, well, why don't I play it like that? Well, that's uncomfortable. There's the way that you need to play it, okay? Fingers one, finger three, finger two. Again, clean notes. We don't want any of that going on. Okay, drop that bottom finger down one fret. We've got the minor chord. Okay, so that's three chords that we're going to use quite a lot of. Because we're going to, later on, we're going to turn them into what we call bar chords. We'll talk about that in a later session. Now, there are many chords that we can learn. I'm not going to go through every chord. Um, my advice to you is buy a good chord book. They're available from about £5 to £10. I've got one. I use one all the time. 
For example, you can play an E chord 27 different ways on this fretboard. You don't need to know all of those. Just learn three or four shapes that you like, that you like the sound of, that you like the way the shape feels to yourself. Same thing with the A and the D chords. Just find a couple of different ways of playing them.